Alright, I wanted to make a video on how to make a cheap screen for your home theater. You got a projector that you're wanting to project onto the wall. Uh, you can buy screen material. You were looking at least two or three hundred bucks for any sort of decent screen. Um, and then you're, it's not usually exactly custom. So we uh, went up and projected our image on the wall, measured out exactly what we wanted. We're going to be able to make a custom screen for that. What you basically want to use is masonite. And this right here, actually let me come up there and grab the camera. All right, this stuff right here is masonite. We use a one eighth. This is a one eighth masonite. This is the same stuff that you would use like a pegboard in your garage. It's got all the holes in it that you put your stuff in. Uh, this is the same material. It's just not, uh, doesn't have the holes in it, obviously. And it is, I'm not sure how well this is focusing on here, but it is, it's basically kind of like glass. I mean, it's real, real smooth. Um, so you're getting a, a very, very, very smooth image. And uh, Lewis here, my brother-in-law, he today cut this to the exact size that we needed and sanded it. Well, Lewis, go ahead and tell us what the, what the plan is now. Well, I sanded it with uh, 150 grit sandpaper and just an orbital sander. And all I was trying to do is this surface of this stuff is, is, is so slick it's shiny and I wanted the paint to be able to stick to it, the primer. So I just sanded it lightly with 150 grit sandpaper on an orbital sander. Uh, and that roughed up the surface just enough that we'll take a wet towel and wipe it off to get all the dust off of it. And then on the borders, I just used, this is medium density fiberboard trim that they got at Home Depot. It's uh, two and a half inch by three quarter inch. And what I did is I did a one eighth inch, I set my table saw up and did a one eighth inch cut down here, just the width of the saw blade, which wound up being one, inch, uh, one eighth of an inch, same width as the material, and then three quarters of an inch deep. And so we took our measurements and that'll allow us, it actually, this piece actually goes on the end, but to give you an idea here, with the 45 cuts on the side, this piece, after we get the masonite up on the wall, nailed up and then painted, We'll paint these separately, paint these flat black, and then these trim pieces will just go on the side. And this, this recess cut allows it to go flat against the wall, because without the recess cut, it'd be bent up like that. So it allows it to go flat against the wall, butt up to the material. And we took our measurements of the size that we needed. And because I used a three quarter inch reset on the top and a three quarter inch reset on the bottom, we had to subtract one and a half inch so we had to actually recalculate our screen size. So to make sure that when this piece is on the top and the bottom, and then these pieces are on the left and the right, that this screen surface was still 1.78 uh, to one, which is the 16 by nine uh, aspect ratio, which is what most, most of the movies now are filmed in, to be displayed in. The paint that I read online in a chat forum that I found works really well, I did this on a screen when I lived in California before I moved here, is uh, Bare Ultra Pure White in Flat. Bare Ultra Pure White, color 1850, um, just flat latex enamel paint, but 1850 is a the color. There are cheaper paints out there, but they recommended using the Ultra Pure White, and I found that on the screen that I made in California, it works really well. Um, it is a very bright white. If you're using a CRT projector like we are, it allows those colors to really be reflected back without having what they call hot spots or spots that are shiny on the screen because of the way the CRT tubes display the image. Um, this would be the equivalent of about a gain screen of probably about a 1.0 gain, maybe a tiny bit less, but it works really good. Now, if you are going with a LCD projector, you need to have the tiniest bit of gray in here. So this paint actually, I wouldn't worry about the ultra pure white if you're using an LCD or a DLP projector. You want the tiniest bit of gray. Just go online to chat forums and there's various Bare, formulas. Bare silver screen is what? Bare silver screen, yeah, yeah. Bare silver screen is a good color. I don't have the number on that one. Because what that does is your colors will benefit from having the tiniest bit of gray on the screen. Compared to this one where we're using a CRT, it doesn't, its colors are good enough because it has better black level. It needs a white screen. A projector that has, does, doesn't have as good a black levels will benefit for the tiniest bit of gray. And that silver screen is a great color for those. That's what Kenneth's old screen was. And it really helps the colors. So when you have a red, it looks like a deeper red, not a pinkish color. Like it would if we shined it on this ultra pure white screen. But with the CRT, we won't have an issue with that. No. So step number one, get this thing painted. Yep. Or get this thing cut, I'm sorry. Yep. Step number two, sanding it down. Yeah, do a light sand on it. And we're not trying to level it. We're not trying to do anything. I'm just trying to rough the surface up a little bit. We're gonna use just Kills white primer on it. 
and I just wanted to make sure that it was that the surface you'll see when you look at the stuff in the store it's it's shiny and I was just trying to rough it up just enough to help that uh, primer because it'll soak into it as well but just help it stick to it a little bit then next thing is to put it up on the, the wall yeah make sure we're level and all that on the wall and then we're gonna paint it on the wall yeah I think and that's easy you can paint it before you hang it but the problem is is remember this is flat paint um, if you put if you it'd be real easy to lay this thing in, in his uh, living room under on a sheet of plastic with some two by fours under it and paint it the problem is is then when you touch it, oil in your fingers, anytime you touch it, you're gonna have a potential of, of making marks on it or smudge marks, and then you'll be repainting it. The benefit of a painted screen is if you come in and your, you know, your kids are drawing on it with crayons, you don't have to flip out and have a hissy fit because you know you can just repaint it. Um, unlike a fabric screen, you might have to scrub on it to try to hopefully get the material off. But if his daughter comes in here with Sharpie pens after we're done and draws big smiley faces all over it, all he's, all he's got to do is put some frog tape here on these edges and then just repaint it and he's good again, just like nothing ever happened. So that's one of the benefits of it. The other, the only problem with, with painting it after you hang it is you have to make sure there's no drips. If you get a drip on it, it's going to be a problem because you can't sand this latex paint till it's cured forever. So um, just do really light coats, just do a bunch of coats. I'm planning on this one, we'll probably do one or two uh, primer coats. And then when we come to the top coat, we'll probably do probably three or four top coats because we want a good even finish so you don't want to rush it trying to do it in one coat put it on super heavy and you got runs and sags just do a nice light coat bag the brush put stuff back in here wash the pan out come back the next day do another light coat and just let it set because taking your time will make it look better rushing it'll make it will make it look like a rush job so um, so yeah we hang it get it painted and then uh, once the paint's good and dry we'll put the uh, trim pieces on and we'll be good now we're gonna paint the trim pieces ahead of time and it's just flat, just flat black paint. I think it's rust oleum like what I got. All right, so we're gonna head on up to the theater and uh, start working on this project. Okay, so I'm pull this out here. Okay, just away. hard to aim with this thing. Give me that. Stud. Watch out, don't step on it. Where? The, the trim board. Oh, trim. Do a little bit of mudding over if it is too high. Just reset it and put a little mud on it. Well, I Do you need drywall mud? Yeah, it's up here too. So you're just wetting this down to get rid of any sand or dust or anything? Yeah, because uh, next coat is going to be the kill primer coat. And sometimes paint, where actually the primer will actually work better if the surface is just the tiniest bit damp. It really doesn't matter on this stuff. This stuff will be dry before we even get the paint open. Because I did not wipe it off. I just blew it off with a leaf blower after I sanded it at the house. All right. Good, dude. I don't All think right. we're gonna see it, man. And it's, it'll give it a few minutes, it'll dry. I think we're good. If you got your own brush, we can start hitting the uh, trim pieces and getting them black. Okay. So we're gonna need a couple coats on this because there's just no way that flat black's gonna cover white in one coat. So when it comes time to work on the screen, we can just pick these two saw horses up and move them my way a foot and give us more room. Because by, you know, by that time, the drips won't be dripping. Okay. All right, so uh, at this point, what I've done is I have primed the screen here 
uh, the masonite screen uh, twice. Did two coats of primer on it, and then three coats of the bare ultra white uh, flat paint. So hopefully uh, this will work. It's, uh, it's it turned out pretty smooth, uh, just about as smooth as you're going to be able to get. And uh, so now we're going to put the trim pieces on here, and uh, we're just going to be able to use the compressor and and uh, hit these guys up here cover up a little bit of this uh, extra paint that we got up here. So here we go, we're gonna put the trim pieces on. I'm doing side side brads here, so it's going to split the piece out. So right here, so you just need a little putty there as well. See, so it keeps them kicking out. See how it's popping out there on the edge? Should I go on the top now? You won't see it. It's all funny games. I put one of these in my finger. There, that'll stop it from popping out. You're just putting a brad up at the top. On oh, the top or the side, yeah. So that way it won't pop out. And if these edges aren't good, he can just put a little putty in there. And then a little wet sand. Just don't put any down here, because if you if you have a gap here, just deal with it. Because what'll happen is you'll get black on the screen, and then you'll go touch up the white, get white on the black, and put black on. It just it's a vicious cycle. You can't get out of it. So we sat down here. We got a little bit. I don't know if you can see that or not. We don't have a whole lot of light. We're working at night here. You can see that there's a uh, little bit of a gap there, but no big deal. I'm just going to put a little putty in there, and uh, also on all these little little nails, we'll cover up. This is just shooting into drywall, so I don't know if it's going to hold. Well, that's pretty good. So we just put, let's just put two nails in the top and bottom and sides. And then he's going back and doing, just to tighten it up on the top so it's not flopping around. You can see this one, didn't have the air up enough so it's bucked out a little bit. So um, on that one, just paint over it black, you will never see it. And then I'm nailing at the bottom because the overlap, I want to shoot the nail into the screen material because it overlaps it by a half an inch. You don't, you don't need a ton of brads. So I'm probably, probably over nailing it. Yeah, if you look over here, the reason I'm doing the ones on the side, if you look right here, if you listen, it's just a little loose there. And just one, even though it's shooting just to the drywall, that's just enough to stop it from rattling. Because believe it or not, with the subwoofer right there, these things, He'll be watching a movie in here going, what am I hearing? What is that What is that noise? And it's the actual, it could be any any number of things in your theater can rattle like that. And you wouldn't even be thinking about it. We'll just paint up each one of those. Kind of see it there, my focus. Paint those up. Probably what you need to do is just do another coat on the face of it. Just yeah. very careful so you don't get any on the screen. All right, so basically that's it. We got there our masonite, uh, cut it to the dimensions we wanted, mounted it up on the wall, painted it two times prime, uh, three times with the uh, white coat on it, and then just put up our trim pieces that we'd already painted as well. Anyway, so that's how you build a really good screen for your theater. Lewis, we spent what eighty five dollars? It was eighty. Yeah, it was about eighty bucks with, with everything. Eighty bucks or so. And that included so. the piece of trim I threw down the uh, driveway that I cut it too short. So maybe 75 bucks or yeah, so without uh, without having uh, mistakes made. So anyway, there you have it. Hopefully it helps you with your home theater. And now we're going to calibrate this thing and uh, start watching some movies. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in another video.